Hey, welcome to another segment here of CR Wrestling Commentary. And today I'm going to talk about garbage wrestling. I said I'd bring it up and I'd do a thing on it. And I figured it would be best to do so. Um, so, that beep you heard, that is Cedra, <laughs> the matriarch, asking me questions. Are you okay with me getting a cake for my birthday? So I'm going to type to her. Yeah, we all like cake. All right. <laughs> uh, so garbage wrestling. Garbage wrestling ruins it for a lot of other wrestling. You've got your, um, you know, your, I'm, I'm just going to say your um, standard professional wrestling shows. And then you've got garbage wrestling. What's garbage wrestling? Garbage wrestling is basically when shows are hardcore. Weapons, tables, all that stuff. That's what garbage wrestling is. And that's... Now look, when I grew, when I was growing up, and I, I'm watching wrestling, and I'm watching WWF, I'm watching NWA as it's transitioning to WCW, and I'm just like... Watching wrestling matches, body slam, suplex, um, thrown into the corner too hard, or you know, and then the idea of a wrestler is, is as D'Lo Brown recently said on uh, a podcast that you know we're illusionists. That's what wrestling wrestlers are. Now, my ad, I'm not here saying that I'm a professional wrestler. As again, I will keep trying to say every once in a while that I'm not a professional wrestler. I've never been in the ring. I have watched and studied and whatnot uh, uh, professional wrestling best that one can up close and personal from afar and watching on TV and enacting moves myself on friends and performing them honestly safely. You know, I'm not going to sit there and do anything without thinking 100% that I'm going to do this safely. Like, what if I was placed in this move? Then I want someone to perform this move on me this way. And that's what I would do. So, in addition with that information, that caveat, that disclaimer, also I want this to relate back to Fire Pro Wrestling World. And you also get a chance, a little insight on how I do my wrestlers in this. And I'm going to try to make this short. So, and here's the thing. When you watch wrestling, you get to see this stuff. You know, the, as I said, the body stuff, suplex, back drops, uh, knee crusher, shin crusher, spinning, shin breaker, arm bars, arm ringers, wrist locks, top wrist locks, key locks, you know, some of the same name or slightly variation, triangle choke, triangle arm bar, all this other stuff. You get to see it. So when you get a garbage show, basically that's just, honestly, a term, I don't know who came up with that. I don't know. Um, Jim Cornell's not the first one I heard say it. The one I heard say it, I don't even know this person's name. They've never mentioned him on the podcast. I mean, I listened for like two hours and this person's name was never mentioned. And he had a very soft, subtle spoken voice, but he was a wrestler. And here's the thing. When you watch hardcore shows, they get slammed on tables. Oh, you get the reaction. Uh, slammed on nails. Oh, my goodness. Um, beating the back with a board, light tube, um, uh, uh, you know, the cupping of the sledgehammer and stuff. And, and you know, you get to see this stuff. And while he gets a reaction from you, you're like, oh, my goodness. And you're like, this is cool and hardcore. They're, they're beating the shit out of each other. You're not thinking about one thing. And it's the one, that's the one thing I thought about when I was a kid. When I watched certain matches, you get slammed through a table, suplexed or powerbomb through a table or whatnot, and this happens, and then they, you know, and they lay there and rest a while, then they get up and keep wrestling. When you see when I see, when I see that, the first thing that goes through my mind is, so how are they going to lose in any other wrestling match? When you can if you're just for an extreme, you get you know, you wrestle legit suplexes and biceps on concrete. And that's all you do. Okay? That's all you've ever done. And then you, and that's all people have ever known you about. So then you go to a legitimate ring and go with legitimate performers and wrestlers of whatnot. Then the people that watch you, they're like, oh, he's going to go to a clean house. This isn't concrete. This is, this is cotton compared to what he's doing. It ruins the business. 
I watch for here's 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 a good example. I watched um uh Leo Rush. He got power bombed off a ladder through a table. All right, he got power bombed and then kicked out. So at that point, what? And that was after already going through a ton of other crap. So what's the point? You see, you you have to you have to understand that. That's why it's garbage wrestling. You watch when I watched ECW, I enjoyed Rob Van Dam and Sabu's matches. I I loved Taz matches. ECW was extreme wrestling, but not it wasn't always New Jack and Tommy Dreamer and and people like that. You know, with the with the trash cans and and, and bowling balls and hockey sticks and keyboards. <laughs> You know, and plates from Walmart and stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't stuff like that all the time. ECW, to me, has some of the greatest pro wrestling matches I had ever seen. But those hardcore matches, I'm looking at them and I'm like, you just got powerbombed through two or three tables, or you just jumped 20 feet onto somebody, onto a table. The person that took that move how, even though they did get beat from that move, how are they going to lose any match after that, any any regular match? Because they just took that. The only way they can lose a match is they keep selling that table and saying that they've never recovered from that. That's that's what that's what makes it kind of garbage garbage wrestling. No matter how smooth and awesome it comes off. You've got to have your limits. Matches like that used to be done in a very heated rivalry and not even to the extreme of today's wrestling, which honestly was pushed in by ECW. And I don't know if ECW was the absolute, you know, originator of this type of wrestling, but they definitely popularized it. And it brought in the backyard wrestlers that wanted to you know, hit each other with the trash cans and throw each other over the ropes and throw the trash can down on them and they're getting beat up. You know, and this backyard wrestling was a thing and people got hurt, I mean, on a, a, a damn near match by match basis. Every match, somebody got hurt in some form or fashion. And, and so when you got this type of stuff and then you compare it to what is wrestling, it makes zero sense because when you get a heated rivalry, that's when you, you, you know, you throw in a trash can or a table or a chair, you know, or a ladder. And then they beat the brakes off each other, pull each other to a bloody pulp. The match is over. And truthfully, it was best done um, with Hardy, uh, uh, Hardy Boy matches when nobody got up. That's the thing. Nobody got up. It wasn't like, oh, I just, you know, dove off this ladder. I'm bleeding. It's like I just spray painted my face onto my opponent whose whole body is spray painted in blood. And then I crash onto him through a table, get the three count and get up. Yeah. No, they laid there like a heap. And that was good. And then you might not see him for a week or two. You just wouldn't see him. That made it look good. That that's 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 how you make hardcore wrestling look great. Now, yes, I understand over in Japan, I think it was FMW, um, and, and some others that did um explosion matches and things like that. I mean downright gruesome matches. And you watch that and you're like, wow. What anyone does to you in any other regular match, how is that going to bother you? I mean, that's just water under the bridge. I mean, those death matches and stuff, I mean, that's... I mean, I watched them, but I could never be entertained by them. I was always worried, concerned. You know, you see uh, Bob Wire rip somebody's bicep open and they tape it up <laughs> during the match. Sabu did that. Yeah. I mean, that's that was legit. That wasn't planned. And so that's why when I watch wrestling, I watch for very key things. 
I watch there's there's garbage shows that don't have hardcore. I mean those are those happen too. And those are the ones where you'll see someone put on what should be a finishing move and then they keep wrestling. And they'll put on finisher after finisher and just keep wrestling. Moves that have been re, re, that's been held that has been regarded and has been protected. Protecting the move used to be important. It used to be important. The Death Valley Driver was protected. You know, the, the Stunner, both created by Luis Piccoli. Um, the Suplex and Power Slam by Jaguar Yakota. I mean, Kadomi Valentine, which is some would call the Vertebraker or whatnot. Um, or reverse gory net breaker bomb of whatever you want to call it, but the Kadomi Valentine. There's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of moves, all kinds of oh my goodness, so many moves. You know, sheer drop brain buster, vertical brain buster, and I mean, and the DDT form would just simply have the arm hooks. That's pretty much it. But these moves used to be protected, and now people are doing them. And then they get up and celebrate instead of going for the pin. That's garbage wrestling. When you dump somebody on their head that epic, pin them. That's what, when I watch, when I'm watching uh, Fire Pro Wrestling World matches, and I see someone do the Canadian Destroyer innovated by P.D. Williams. I'm not going to do this all the time, though, who innovated, but I, sometimes some people just, like, they might want to know, but when you when I see the Canadian Destroyer off the top rope, and then their edit doesn't go for the pin. Instead, what I saw was Canadian Destroyer off the middle rope, then dive off the top rope with a front flip senton, repeat with another front flip senton, and then pick them up. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I can't help but the, I'm sitting here like. I'm going to play this just to give these people the views because I think wrestling should get the views. And I like these people. I'm not a fan of their, their, their edits wrestling. And I don't want to say this stuff disparagingly. I'm just saying, and you know, they're doing what they're doing is this, is their edit. I don't want control. I don't have control. And I'm not telling them how they should be because it's a video game. Do you boo, you know? But at the same time, people, when they make edits and they do all this stuff and, and they, you know, and they want this, they talk about it being, you know, they want to put on a good match. And that's, that's not a good match. I mean, that's basically trying to hurt somebody in real life. If you saw in a cage fight, an octagon fight, and you saw somebody with a spinning back fist knock somebody straight out cold. All right, they hit the mat. I mean, their eyes roll up. They hit their eyes roll in the back of the head. They hit the mat, and then they start kind of shaking the cobwebs loose because that thud on the mat woke them up. Strangely enough, and instead of the ref calling the match, the one that knocked them out goes and pick them up and starts punching them again. What would you really think of that? Now. Even if you are the type that says, oh, I think that would be cool or awesome or funny. Now do this. Put yourself on the receiving end of that. You're the one that just got knocked out, picked up, and, and now they're beating on you. Do you find it cool then? And now if you're going to say, yes, obviously you're trolling and you're just being a complete, you know, ass wipe. But other than that, someone would most likely say, oh, crap, no, I never thought of it like that. When I watch stuff like that, I'm concerned. MMA, which I don't really watch much of. I watch highlight clips at best. And that may be every six or seven or maybe on a month to a, a year or two. Because MMA usually bores me now. It used to be all right. And now it's all the same. Carbon copy. And you might have your feelings about that. But you got to prove me wrong on that because it's carbon copy. You know, in Japan, it wasn't so carbon, carbon copy. I haven't seen a Japan MMA fight in a long time. But it used to go high risk and stuff. I, I don't see that, and I, it's hard to find it. You know, I could look on YouTube, but I'm too busy doing other stuff. Now, when it comes to this wrestling, I want to see people that say, hey, Brain Buster, go for the pin. Death Valley Driver, go for the pin. You know, Destroyer goes for the pin. Something other than I just put on this hellacious move, and I'm going to pick you up. 
That's what I would like to see. When I do my edit, when I make my edits, that's what I do. Certain big moves, you know, go for the pin. Now, if your big move happened to be a hip toss, you ain't got to go for the pin on that. If your big move is a, a, a body slam or a jumping suplex or a, a release power slam, you ain't got to go for the pin on that. No. But if it's going to be a power driver or, you know, some, uh, or some kind of uh, power bomb off the top rope or something epic like that, go for the pin. The Spanish fly, the, the, the backflip uh, sambo slam, the Spanish fly, go for the pin. You know, now it's just basically, a, you know, for the, the defender just taking a front flip and they're just falling on their back. Yes, granted. But this is supposed to be a finisher. Keep that in mind. It's supposed to be a finisher. So make your wrestler go for the pin. That's what you do. And the people that make these edits, look, I want to officially say this. I'm not blaming you. It's not your fault that you're doing this. You don't know any better. All you get to do is honestly see WWE and then uh, some of these garbage shows out of Nevada or um, Central California or stuff like that where they wrestle blow-up dolls and they have grenade spots and things like that. And, and then it's like, and, and certain things are so storyline driven, they never talk about the importance of the inner workings of the wrestling match. They don't talk about that. So you don't know about that and you can't know about that. And that makes it hard for me because I'm, as I'm doing it here, I don't want to alienate anybody and I'm most likely have done it, but I don't want to hurt anyone that, I've, that I like. I don't, want to, I don't want to insult anyone. That's not my idea and that's not what I want to do. But what I want is to shed light on how would you make your edits better? You know? That's what I want to shed the light on. And I'll talk about that in something else because I honestly, I haven't checked the time, but I think this was drawn on long enough. But work, work on watching old school wrestling matches. Just watch. Some matches were just brutal. I mean, when I talk about brutal, I mean, it was just a fight. It matter of a face or a heel. It looked bad because they, not bad as in, a poor wrestling match. No, it looked like a street fight in the ring. <laughs> just, just beat on someone's back. Put a knee to their gut. Punch them in the stomach. Rake them across the face. Throw them across the jaw. And then the heel might fight back. <laughs> yes, it was like that. I want that to sink in. That's, what <laughs> That's how it used to be. In some places, it can be that way. But right now, when you've got... You know, people like Will Ospreay that put on like seven or eight different finishers and then finish with something that right now is a great finisher. But it's like, you don't went through all the finishes. Nobody knows what a finisher is anymore. Nobody. When you got people out there, um, I, like, like look, look, I'm going to tell you who was a good person. Marty Skrull, old school style wrestler mixed with new age and modern type wrestling. Great. Evil, Sonata. You know, you got people like that. They go through a repertoire. Watch that stuff. That's still good stuff. You know, it's, it's hard to find honest, good wrestling these days. But it's still out there. You know, and I still look for it. I've, I've watched Singapore wrestling. I've watched um, Middle Kingdom wrestling. And I'm, I'm looking for other um, wrestling shows. But I'm going to do another uh, commentary soon. Uh probably late probably today or something like that after i've done rendering this one i might if i'm still in the mood but yeah if you got questions if you're curious about something if you're upset with me about something you want to correct me on something please leave your comment down there below you know uh, this will this here will be posted not just on youtube but i'll also share it from youtube onto minds.com slash crw717 I'll, and it all and and if you want to send send me something on twitter still at crw717 Send me your questions, your comments, your critiques, or something there. You know, I always listen. And just like I listen and watch, you know, those that do make these edits and stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm available. So please, let me know how you feel. Um, you know, and if this has helped you, let me know. If it hasn't helped you, let me know why it hasn't or what, where I failed or something like that. 
Um, so I'm going to get out of here. This is Cedric for CR Wrestling, for CR Fire Pro, and CR Fire Pro Road. Thank you back. for listening. Elbow to the back, off the ropes. Jizo Shadai is getting out of the way best that he can. Hammer throw evaded. Another hammer throw evaded. Go behind. Slipper chop. That could be it after all that head damage. Come on. There you go. Kai just survives. Come on, bro. Sliding drop kick to the head. He couldn't follow up. No kicks, no kicks, high kick. Pull him away. Try to pin him. We're in the ropes. Come on, man. The knee to the head must have dumped him down a bit. But he's going for a split legged moonsault. He beat unknown with this. Three. Three. Yes. Yes. Kaijin wins back to see our Fire Pro Heavyweight Championship. He brings it right back to the DWO. That's my boy right there.